In this video we're going to talk about the physics of pinball and how we're going to implement friction in our pinball program. So friction is basically the force that is causing our ball to slow down. So we expect when we see a rolling ball that it will slow down just like we can see in this video. So to implement that in Scratch, we're going to just multiply our speed variable by some number that's less than 1 that we're going to call friction. So um, every time the loop runs, this is going to reduce our speed variable by some fraction of what it was in the previous run. For example, if I set my friction to 0.98, and I have an initial speed of 10. You can see down here in this table um, what happens to my speed as we run through the loop or a forever loop. So to begin with, speed is 10, and then we multiply that by 0.98, so we reduce the speed, and it's now on our next run going to be 9.8. Um, similarly for run two, we start with 0.98 and reduce that now because we multiply it by a fraction to 0.9 or 9.6. And again for uh, run three. So you can see what that does. Let's take a look and see what that looks like in Scratch. So if we go to our Scratch program, I have a forever loop set up here and I'm setting my speed in my forever loop to my speed variable times my friction variable. You can see what friction is up here. It's right now set at um, 0.994. So as I increase my speed, well, let's start over, start the game, and I'm going to increase friction so it's that 0.994 again. You can see my ball starts to slow down as it's bouncing around and it slows and slows until eventually it's going to get slow enough that it just stops. But it takes a while. So with this equation, we have an initial quick slowdown, and then it takes longer and longer for it to actually stop. Um, we would maybe want to implement uh, some other code to check and see where our speed is. Like if we had um, had it stop when speed was less than something like 0 0.1 or 0 0.2. Oop, I didn't want to put that there. So I'm going to put an if statement or an if loop, if then loop here, so that I can say um, if speed, and I'm going to grab a less than block here and go into my data and grab my speed variable, put that over here. These um, blocks have already been created in if you've been working through uh, worksheets for the engineering principles class, you've already created blocks like this. So I'm going to say if speed is less than, we'll say 0.2, then I'm going to set speed. I'm just going to stop. So I'll select this to say, if speed is less than 0.2, then I'm going to set speed to 0 so that I stop. So if we start this program over again, we can see that the ball starts to slow down. I'm going to increase my friction a little bit so that it slows down a little faster. And eventually, as we get down to that 0.2, it should just stop. And that is showing what would be static friction. So there we go, we're at 0.2 and it should go to zero and it just stops. So that looks pretty natural for what a ball would do. We could implement our friction by just subtracting a number. This would be applicable if we had a, a sliding ball, but our ball rolls. Um, if we had just a sliding ball that was just kind of maybe like on a a foosball table or something like that, we could use just subtracting a constant. So I'm taking my speed, I'm going to each loop set that speed to my speed variable, and I'm going to subtract off a small amount. So let's take a look and see what that looks like. 
so it still slows down and it's a linear rate at which it slows and I have some code in here to say if my speed is less than there than zero I'm just going to set it to zero so that the ball stops and doesn't have negative speed to go backwards because that doesn't look like what happens in real life when we have a rolling ball. So just to take a look at our um, how those two compare we can if we have just subtracting a constant we have a different kind of result here's a graph of you know for each loop cycle how the speed changes if I multiply by that fraction um, to implement friction then we have this kind of a shape of our decrease in speed as our ball slows down if I subtract a constant then it's just a linear slowing as my ball slows down so um, those are just different kinds of results this sort of um, exponential decay kind of looking um, rate of slowing makes more sense for a rolling ball and looks more natural for a rolling ball now if we go back to scratch and say okay what happens if I set friction to one whoops I want that there I want it in my forever loop so I'm going to start this again and I'm going to set friction to one so I just have some code implemented and I've set friction to one and now my ball doesn't slow at all that means that there's no reduction in speed um, if friction is set to greater than one so I'm going to change this code here and um, say to begin with we're gonna set friction to 1.1 think about what will happen there if I'm multiplying by a number that's greater than one each run that I go through we'll go back to our ball code and stop and start again and it speeds the ball up really fast kinda like it's gone shot through a rocket so that doesn't make any sense for us physically so friction has to be when we're multiplying by a friction to slow our speed it has to be less than one to have it be something that represents what actually happens in real life.